public for which it stands, one nation, Okay, Rebecca, can we have the roll call? Director Thomas. Yes, I'm here. Director Raderman. Here. Director Underhill. <laughs> Director Underhill. Here. And Director Cicada. Here. And uh, Director Davidson is absent today. All right. Moving on to public comment. At this time, members of the public may address the board on any non-agendized item. The public is encouraged to work through staff to place items on the agenda for board consideration. No action can be taken on matters not listed on the agenda. Comments are limited to three minutes per person. Do we have any public comment? Any online? All right, seeing none. Moving on to new business 3A, this discussion action regarding side letter agreement with the SEIU local 1021 and amending the fiscal year 2021-22 personnel allocation. And that is Stacy. Hi, Stacy. Good afternoon. I'm gonna take my mask off so yeah, I can please. speak a little clearer this time. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, though, so to before you today is a agenda item regarding a side letter with um, the SEIU local uh, 1021 MOU. Um, in evaluating whether changes in the organizational structure at the district um, could improve district uh, responsiveness to customers, uh, myself, Michael, Jessica, and Rebecca have been um, working on a plan with the admin services department um, and trying to see what we can do um, to, again, uh, increase the responsiveness to district customers. Um, so the proposal before you today is uh, what we, um, the staff, are, are recommending, and that includes uh, first step of creating a customer service supervisor position, which will be dedicated um, high level support, one-on-one um, -on -one daily management for the customer service representatives. Um, the second portion of this plan would be to fill the current customer service vacancy with a limited term employee of about a year. That way it will give the customer service supervisor the ability to um, assess the department and the needs of the district and that will give us an option to um, backfill if, if we feel necessary. Um, the third step is also to hire a temp through mother load job training through a grant program that is of no cost to the district um, and that will help customer service department immediately in the high call volume due to the new payment system um, and other uh, um, high call volume calls that are coming in through the customer service department right now. Uh, that position is available to us for up to 600 hours, 29 uh, hours per week. And again, that's grant funded through the mother of uh, job training. Um, then the last step would be for um, when all new staff, customer service um, supervisor and the limited term temp are on board um, and everyone is um, trained and our new finance and payroll system has also been implemented um, as a second phase of the Tyler implementation. They give us the opportunity and then to uh, again uh, take a look at the staffing needs within the customer service and finance department. And it'll also include some shifting of duties as well um, again in the future. Nice. Um, so for what I'm looking for today is board approval. Uh, to approve the side letter and personnel allocation to get our plan started, which um, again, first step is hiring a customer service supervisor. Very good. Thank any you. Questions? Um, board members, Bertha, do you have well, any questions? Yeah. Um, OK. So what we're doing is we've lost someone in customer service. Correct. We lost. We lost Holly. Correct. OK, so basically what we're doing is bringing on a. Um, a one year. 
Well, so if I could step in here real quick just to clarify it, the, what, where we need action from the board today is just the approval of the side letter and the approval of the personnel allocation amendment. And that en enables us to then hire the customer service supervisor, create that customer service supervisor position and, and add that position. The, um, the vacancy in customer service happened while we were already in the process of developing these plans and it just gives us an opportunity to you know replace fill that vacancy with a limited term hire which is already underway we, we have candidates coming in for interviews we've already solicited for that position um, so we'll fill the vacancy with a limited term hire and um, and then at the end of that or before the end of that year, we'll have an opportunity to reevaluate once the customer service supervisor is here, the proper staffing. Okay, because we're we're saying at this point, I think I hear what you're saying, is that we do need three. We definitely need three. The question is whether or not we need four. And so by doing with a conversion, we want four. Right. So by that well, the supervisor and right now it'll be two plus a supervisor at some point right and would, limited so, no it would be so right now we have two customer service representatives right. mm -hmm. and we have a vacancy for the third spot. bring in the limited right. so we would be filling all three of those spots and adding a customer service supervisor correct yeah and in addition to that we're also adding a temp but that's a fun that's a position funded through mother load job training which is right great. but and right now we just need to get uh, customer service staff back up to a level where they can handle call volumes and um, um, you know just the, the, the workload that they're under right now while we're bringing a customer service supervisor on board getting that person trained up and which is going to take some time before that person's really ready to to take over um, and then evaluate whether we need the customer service supervisor plus two customer service representatives or plus three. Right. So and then and I think it's also important, you know, there's also a huge portion of the external affairs manager's position that is that is doing what the customer service supervisor will be doing. So it's um, also replacing part of that. So um, there's, there's the, a lot of layers there. We wanted to make sure the board had the whole picture here, so that's why we added, yeah. included all the detail about really this is part of the comprehensive plan. Um, but as far as board action today, it's just the approval yeah. of the creation of the and customer service. The plan plan that you laid out in here makes total sense to me. You know, once you get to the end or close to the end, you reevaluate and we'll see then what the needs are. Anything else, Bertha? OK, well, wait, you know, let's let's go back for a second. OK, so you're telling us uh, that we don't really have to be concerned about. This temporary employee that we're getting through muzzle of job training, right? That's not going to affect any count of any kind. No, right now we're just kind of to, to Stacy and, and Jessica's credit you know, doing everything we can to bring in some more resources to help with the current workload and the current right now we're understaffed and overworked. And that was an immediate, you know, phone call that and an outreach that was done and they have a candidate that was available to come in and interview right away. They interviewed the candidate already. He's starting on Monday. OK, so let's go back. So we'll, we're going to have the three customer service reps again. Yes, right. Then we're going to have a manager for those customer service reps. Supervisor. Supervisor. A supervisor. Yes. OK, because right now. Who has customer service? Jessica. The external affairs manager. Jessica does. Uh huh. And, and that is quite a look. Yes, I understand, you know, in addition to what you what other jobs responsibility you have, I, it is quite a load. Yeah. Well, looking at even what they said, I mean, Stacy has taken on items that usually go to finance. So I think at the end, no matter how it works out, whether it's three, two or whatever, um, everybody going back to their original duties, I think will be really nice, too. Yeah. So. Yes, yeah, so I think in the end, it, it, in addition to some of the IT solutions that we're bringing in, 
it resolves some long-standing issues that we've been struggling with. Okay, so you're going to carry us or take us through something else when we're talking about reallocation of job duties. Yeah, so we added that into the staff report just to give the, the full picture of the, all the different changes that are being considered here or that are that, are, that we're working through. Um, like I said, really the focus for the for the board approval is the, the customer service supervisor position in the, the Oh, side. okay. So you just put that in here so that we see the long term so picture. So that it, so yeah, yeah the, so that the whole goal. thing makes sense. And yeah. You can see what we're doing, um, but none of that requires board approval necessarily. Correct. So okay. So you just put this in as filler, relooking, reallocation. Context, not just filler. <laughs> Context. Yeah. yeah. We, well, it was helpful for me because you know I can see what your goals are and it helped yeah. me to realize that it makes sense. So that's what they put that in there for. Yeah. Help to us. Mm -hmm. And the resolutions, those are just um, formalities needed for the union for the most part. Uh, yes, so that we, yeah. well, the and personnel allocation is part of the budget. Right. And the MOU right. is, is um, yeah. that is, we were required to get a side letter in order to right. do this. Um, and we've met with the union on, on multiple occasions and we've had some really productive meetings with them on this um, and arrived at an agreement. Very good. Yeah, well, so let me go back to this reallocation of job duties. Um, you know, because I'm, I'm hearing that everybody is up to here in in the responsibility. So the reallocation of job duties should be handled very smoothly. That we can do that with no problem at all. <laughs> I certainly hope that it goes. <laughs> <out there. laughs> it's really, though, um, it's I'm, I'm glad that's the impression that we give and we will continue to try to give that impression. <laughs> There's a lot more to it than that. In fact, we can't even do much of that until we add right now we're we're bringing Tyler on board for utility billing only. The next phase of that will be bringing Tyler finance and um, and hey. HR modules on board, which is going to be another heavy lift. Um, and okay the the work that the the reallocation of tasks that we describe in here probably really won't happen until that software is on board which is going to be at least a few months um so this is going to be phased in right if we were to just you know implement all these changes tomorrow we would overwhelm customer service right. more than they yeah. already are overwhelmed and it, it would be a, a there would be an imbalance in work tasks so we're going to make sure that we have the IT infrastructure in place, the training in place, and the you know the support right. in place for those folks before we make any of those changes. Right. It'll be phased in, you know, at the right time, yeah. and smoothly, as you suggested. Okay. <laughs> My other question has to do with. Um, Okay, this was done at a management position. Have we done consulting or, you know, not have we brought in our customer service and everybody else who would be impacted by yep. this to talk to them about what we're doing? Yep. I mean, that's really crucial because our staff is so lean right now. Yeah, we've had a lot of meetings with admin services staff, with the union leadership. Um, yeah, there's been a lot of, a lot of consultation along the way. And and we're ha and we're pleased with the response that we got from. Yes. Everybody's going to step up to the. Yeah, we have support across the board for what we're proposing here. Okay. Uh, yes, Scott, go ahead. Okay. Um, okay um, I have a couple have couple, couple questions. questions. Some, it's, um, some, uh, it sounds like we're, we've always had. Always for had for, am, am I echoing? Yes. You're breaking up a little bit. Okay. Is that is that is that better? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, anyway, so so right now or until before Holly left, we've always had three customer service representatives in there and they haven't had a supervisor, but uh, um, uh, not a supervisor position, but right now it looks like we're gonna be having, it sounds like at least for this, at least for a year, um, we, we're gonna have five, if I'm not mistaken, if what you're explaining 
um, is is it, we're going to have we're we're filling with the mother load job training to assist with an, for free. Someone's coming in on the guys coming in on Monday and we'll be back to three. Well, fine. One of them is not going to be very well trained. And then in the meantime, we're authorizing or we're proposal here is to authorize the supervisor for the customer service department is going to be posted and, and interviewed. We'll start soon if it's approved today. And then in addition to that, we're talking about bringing in a, um, a full time. Position for a temporary one year limited employee. So that gives us five. How how long will this mother load job training guy be here or be available to us? So it's only for 600 hours, 29 hours a week is all we can. Um, the grant covers. OK, do do and that that's fine for for a, a freebie there, but it, after this one year, this limited term, it, it just seems kind of weird. How how is how is that employee going to be prepped and then and then and then let go? Um, I've, I've never heard of a, a limited term, I mean, especially with the the union involved and um, in the rights that employees have here in California. How will how will that work? The county does it. So okay. <laughs> we uh, and we 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 consulted with the union on this. There's no opposition to it. Um, they understand the need for it. Um, so that the, really the three the three permanent positions um, going forward, right? As this is structured, would be the customer service supervisor and two customer service representatives. So we would still be that will be kind of our default position. We'll still be at three total with one of them being a supervisor. The limited term hire, we feel like we need, especially because of the amount of time it takes to get people really fully up to speed and the customer service supervisor is gonna be working on a lot of stuff in addition to just learning the customer service representative job. Um, we need that assistance immediately and we need that person to help a answer phones, respond to customers, you know, deal with the issues that we've had a hard time keeping up with. Um, so there's a, there's a there's a short term need for that higher staffing level, but we also didn't want incoming an incoming candidate to think that that was a permanent position. We wanted to make sure we're clear from the beginning that the expectation is that that position will go away after a year unless we reevaluate and there's some you know there's some other circumstances and we decide we need it. But for now, we would have to come back to the board for that approval. We would have to. Um, you know, there would be a, a process to, to get that approval. The, de the default for that position will be it goes away after one year um, so that we're not, you know, we're not giving anybody, we're not creating any false expectations of a more long term position. It just gives us, us that flexibility to reduce the staffing level without having to lay somebody off essentially. Right. OK, and I got one one more follow up question. And thank thank you for that explanation. I, I have no problem with that at all. Um, the the with the adding uh, or changing some job functions, moving, moving the f service functions or uh, moving tasks, I, I should say, from the, from the finance department to the to customer service, um, sounds like it's going to help human. Uh, I'm looking at point number four, bullet point number four at the at the top of this. Uh, as Stacy um, uh, read those four the the four items that we got going. Um, when we if we're going to be back to three in, within a year from today, would would changing you know adding those functions? I mean, if our goal is to get back to three, and we're adding functions to customer service and sh shifting them from out of uh, finance, is is that you know, or are we just looking forward to a to a, a permanent? Um, most likely, will we end up with four with adding new functions for the customer service? Even I mean, we know right now that they're swamped and full as Bertha pointed out. Um, yeah. But anyway, just wanted to wanted yeah. to get an explanation on on why additional functions are being added to to their plate um, at the same time here. That's a good question. So my my thinking on this long term is is three is the is the right number. Um, the so right now the the workload is significantly increased because of the Mueller transition and the transition to the Tyler finance software. And then they and then one of the experienced representatives left 
So there's just a, a really high workload on the rest of the admin services department. Um, so that's why we're trying to get people in as quickly as we can to at least handle, you know, um, uh, take some of that workload off and make sure that we're still being responsive to customers. Um, long term, though, once that software, once the meters and the, the utility billing and the finance software gets in, implemented and works as 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 designed, as long as that's the case, um, it should actually we, we should be more efficient coming out of this than we were going into it. And um, so it should free up some bandwidth for the for the customer service representatives. Um, and, and we're not talking about a huge amount of bandwidth here. So they're they're already involved in um, a lot of a, a lot of the, the billing functions that will just be trans. It goes back and forth between the accounting tech and the customer service representatives right now. So we'll just be taking portions of that and giving all of it to customer service, but it's not a huge additional new responsibility that that they're not already at least somewhat familiar with. In fact, they've done it in the past. Um, so I think long term, the, the, the vision is that we'll get through the, the heavy, um, you know, the heavy lift that we're in the middle of right now will um, be able to realize some efficiencies from this implementation. And once they're back to being fully staffed and up to speed, it won't be an additional, it won't be a huge additional burden for them to take on those, those accounting components. Okay, thank you. I'm done. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Russ, do you have anything out there? Do you have any questions? Yes, I do. Your turn. Okay. Um, Michael, you, you talked about uh, uh, the, the, these um, solutions are intended to uh, kind of address some long-standing issues, and I would be willing to vote for this uh, for that reason alone. But I'm I'm concerned about the the position that you're offering up to a person who would have no guarantee beyond a year. Um, that's uh, I'm kind of wondering about the others that you're intending to hire. Is there any um, attention being given to a probationary period? What if we interview? We we just really hire somebody that that is looks like is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Turns out after 90 days that it's not a good fit. Is the union going to stand in the way of us saying? It, it, sorry, it has. It's not a good fit. Um, uh, thanks for your effort. Goodbye. What? What's? What's your response to that? Are you on? Is your, are you on mute? Did anybody hear that? Hello. I did, Russ. I don't know if you can hear me. I, the boardroom is froze. Um, oh my God! Just, it must be must be global warming or something. So. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna guess if someone's online, they could probably hear us. But I don't know that uh, boardroom is. Oh, Cindy just sent me a message saying, "Just a minute." Okay. <clears throat> so if you heard my comments, did they have any validity? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I don't I don't know about the that's a good question about the 90 day pro probation period. Um, and 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 you're on your you're focused on you're talking about the the one year hire, the limited term hire or the or the supervisor, which one or or both? All of the above. Okay. I, I just the the, the, the long-standing issue here has been you know, people that that aren't necessarily doing a good job, and we can't do anything about it. All right. Hey, there okay. we go. Russ, hey. I got your back. Yeah. Russ, yeah, we we got. Where did we leave off? <laughs> okay, so I think I got the the majority of your question, but um, so 
A couple of things in response. Um, one is, is that we do have a probationary period already. So any new employee that starts at the district um, has a one year probation. And and if the if for some reason it's not a good fit, we can terminate that employee at any point during that first year. Um, with or without you know without without having to go through the normal process um okay. so that probationary period already exists for all new hires um i think in this case the 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 expectation for the customer service supervisor will be you know this is going to be an experienced highly qualified person that we bring in to fill that role and and you know fill that role for a for a long period of time um, that's that's that would be the hope for that person. It's only the limited the, the customer service rep position that we're filling a vacancy. They would have the the limited term tag on it, and we're only doing that just to make sure that we maintain the flexibility, and so that we're clear with that with that employee and for everybody involved that that's the expectation coming into it. So that it, we're not. You know, even though we would we would have the right to terminate within the first year anyways, but if somebody is, you know, we wouldn't want somebody to say leave another job and take that position when we know the expectation is it's probably only going to be a year um, and they lose their job at the end of that year, even if they've performed, you know, exemplary. So that's that's why we're just making very clear from the get go. That the expectation for that position is it's 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 no more than Emperor. a year. Yeah. Okay, and, I understand. Uh, I got it. Is there anything else, Russ? No, that's all. And if there are no further questions, I'd like to um, move the item. Okay. Let me see if there's any. I have enough. public comment. We're yeah. through with our discussion. Okay. Um, we can move and get a second, and the discussion can continue. Okay. Well, yeah, but we're still we haven't finished what we were um, well we went through everybody and Russ was the last one I was going to make a comment uh -huh. but I'm okay we can go ahead and get a second if anybody wants to make one and then we'll come well, back to Bertha's question. I have question. a question on the accounting department job duties. Are we meet do okay. we need one is this one motion for both items or or do we need yes. to separate, take them separately? Yes. You can move both with one motion and we'll come I'll back second. to you. I'll second right. the motion. Yeah, let's, and a second. let's go back to Bertha, then we'll open it up for any public comment. Okay. OK, well, I would just like a little bit of clarification about the accounting department job duties. There was a statement in here about uh, payroll. And, you know, I didn't think payroll was part of. You know, part of the issue unless we got into this description or you know can you explain to me what we're doing stacy's probably better to answer that one i guess let me, are you explain what we're doing in regards to payroll right now huh? so payroll is currently can everybody excuse me can everybody mute your microphone if you're not talking so Okay. Uh, so currently payroll uh, is reviewed and processed in the human resources department as far as the um, evaluation of time cards and pushing the button to do the direct deposits through um, ADP and then all of that information then gets pulled and sent to the accounting department um, for the pro the uploading to the general ledger and all the, the functions that they need to do for the payroll. Um, prior to 2012, uh, payroll has always resided in the finance department. Um, we had an employee who retired um, shortly after that and then the decision was made to move it into payroll or move it into HR. Um, as far as the reviewing of the time cards and pulling that information and sending it out to get processed through ADP. Okay, so now you're telling me that we're going back to how we used to do it? So the, there, there's the, the communication between ADP and Springbrook 
is not good. And there's a lot of manipulation that has to go on in order for the information from, from ADP to get uploaded into Springbrook. So with the implementation of Tyler, they have a payroll program that connects directly within the finance system. So the, the, there, are lot, there are many steps that don't have to be completed in order for payroll to be um, processed um, efficiently. Additionally, with ADP, we do not have a lot of oversight with the back end of the system and how, um, how calculations or how, um, how they can set up the, the, the payroll system. So with Tyler coming in, we have that ability and we can make changes more easily um, when, say for instance, our experience mod um, rating for workers comp changes and that changes the payroll and the accounting um, amounts that are applied to that account. So just going from HR back to the finance accounting department. Right, which is when typical. When the customer service is all up to par and doing good, yeah, then those, exactly. so right. that's still a way right. that. Right, and, and, and HR, that, please. Yeah, and HR, we're still going to be involved in, you know, the reviewing of time cards and making sure that finance gets the correct information to process correctly. We're not just letting our hands go. Okay, so that, you know, all of your training is going to be complete and what have you with this new. Before we transfer it over, yes, the, yeah. the accounting tech will get trained on the new Tyler payroll software, so they're able to handle that, and then it'll trans transition back. Okay, so payroll will be aligned back into the accounting department, okay. and implementation will take several months, and all necessary training and support will be available prior to the implementation, right. because, you know, this is all brand new, right? And so we can't right. rest I on mean, our, uh, you know, what we used to do. Well, I mean, payroll's not brand new. I mean, the, soft, the, the software. software that that handles it is different. It's going to be different for HR or accounting. I mean, it's going to be different for the district as a whole. Well, you know, I just want to make sure that we all of that is handled smoothly and we we looked at all of the pros and cons and. Uh, you know, Bertha, there, I think what we need to realize is this is like if in a perfect world in the next year, here's how this is going to go. Here's the end result. So is there the first priority is the customer service, getting them all up to speed. If that's going well, then the next step, OK, let's take away from HR, put it in finance, some from finance goes back to customer service. So we're not just gonna say, okay, boom, it's done. Right. You right. have to just work up to make sure that everybody's trained. Well, and that's what that's, you know, that's what I that's want. That's obviously what you know they're working uh -huh. towards. Right. That that is the plan. Yeah. Um there are a lot of other layers here. We tried to give a pretty detailed description, but there's a lot, there, there's still a lot more yeah. going on. One of the additional considerations here is because um in light of the amount of the amount of transition that we've already taken on and and the heavy lift that we're in the middle of right now um in a perfect world we probably would wait a little bit longer before we transition to the uh, to the tyler finance software um but we don't live in that world unfortunately and in the world we live in the server that we're running our finance software on right now is on the brink of failure which is a it would be really really difficult for us to to recover from so we're moving ahead with the transition to the tyler finance software as quickly as possible even though the timing may not be ideal but hopefully in a few months we've made it through the transition we're in right now and then we're able to take on the transition to the fine the new finance software well um Let's and I just want to make sure, as I say, that the whole team is yeah. ready to move. But that's uh, and I, I only bring that up just as an example of, as as Director Skato was saying, you know, this is the this is the plan, and 
Gene. there's a plan B and a C and a D and we'll yeah. see which one we end up on. Yeah, well, I think the the plan is good and we'll just see how it goes and it starts with customer service. Um, OK, so we have a first and a second out there. Any public comment? Seeing none. All right, so we go ahead and uh, do a roll call vote. Director Thomas. <clears throat> I vote yes. Director Ratterman. Yes. Director Underhill. Yes. Director Cicada. Yes. OK, moving on to item number four, the uh, general manager's report. Uh, just a couple of quick um, items since this was a special meeting, but uh, we have a gap here between and regular meeting. I have to leave in about 35 minutes. OK, so just remember. Um, <laughs> First of all, just thank you for being available and flexible on the timing of the, the special meeting. This was an item um, that is a, an important part of this whole plan. And the sooner we were able to implement it and get the job posting out, um, for, you know, we didn't want to, the, the alternative is we were going to have to wait till like mid December to float the job. And we felt like doing it now gives us more time to get that person on board sooner. And so, really appreciate the board's flexibility and, and availability for that. Um, and as you've already heard about the the increased workload that staff are under right now. So, you know, I, I just can't say enough about how much additional work a lot of people have had to take on um, in the last couple of months and um, and people are really stepping up in remarkable ways. So. Um, and this is, you know, throughout throughout the district. Um, so I'm glad that Stacy and and Jessica have led the way on a, um, a a sustained effort this month to show appreciation to staff. So thank you guys for that. Um, multiple different things that are happening this month um, to just express appreciation to how much hard work staff already do and how much additional work um we've taken on and we're like I said we're in the middle of a really heavy lift that um is hard hard for staff it's hard for customers there's a frustration out there you know that in the transition that we're going through right now um and which makes it you know in turn makes it even harder for staff because the call volume and the length of calls um is is harder for that um, for us to handle and staff have just been remarkable and and how much you know have and really shown how dedicated they are so can't say enough about how hard our staff works thank you could i ask a question sure. have we been able to gauge you know i you know we have been through how many conversions <laughs> since i've been around but you know can we do we have any kind of a gauge on on telephone calls or customer complaints or yeah, we have, uh, especially with the new phone system that um, that that we have, we do have much better uh, data and the, the ability to track. Um, I don't have the I don't have that information for you right now, but we can put together. Um, can you? I, I mean, I'd be curious to to know about that. Yeah, I mean, I think we can say without doubt there's a higher, much higher call volume and the length of calls is. Is longer. Right, because it's you know a matter of calls, but again, how long are, are customers keeping you on the phone? Mm -hmm. um, and then st staffing changes. We have a new engineer who started last week, which we're super excited about, and we'll bring him to the December eighth meeting um, to to meet the board and and do a more um, a, a, a introduction at that point. Um, the the new underground crew. Um, that, that the board approved at the last meeting. We've already received applications for the senior position on that crew and we'll be conducting interviews in the near future. Is that an in-house person? Mm -hmm. nice. Well, at least at this point, the, the candidates we have are in-house and, and so um, I would expect that to be the case. Um, and then we have a couple of, you know, the, the wave of retirements keeps coming, so a few more of those. So there'll be a lot of transition and turnover um, among staff over the next several months. Um, but we're used to that. At this point, that's sort of situation normal. Um, there was a good um, camera meeting last week, and 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 kudos especially to Brad for a really good.
presentation on Moak River water rights um, that he prepared and presented um, really led to really good discussion and, and I think provided a lot of detailed information to the camera board members. Um, and so uh, I think there'll be more to come on along those lines and, and Moak River, uh, uh, you know, just broadening the understanding of Moak River operations and water rights among those stakeholders. Um, also, we had a site visit last week um, at the Chips property in West Point where the, the developer is very close to securing full financing and starting construction of the biomass facility up there, which is very exciting. Um, and there's some potential uh, beneficial, mutually beneficial components to that and our the, the, waste, the West Point Wilseyville um, consolidation project that we're doing up there. Um, so we'll be we'll be working closely with those parties. Um, and then lastly, a few of us will be at the Aqua Conference next week. Um, it's in person and virtual, so um, we'll make sure that we bring back goodies for those who are not there. Thanks. What will our attendance be at the Aqua Conference? I believe we'll have four people there. Any board members? Including two board members. Okay. Yeah, uh, Scott and, and Russ. Nice. Okay, that's it. That's it. All righty. So we have uh, item number five, board reports, information and future agenda items. I'll start with our online folks. Um, Scott, do you have anything you want to report at this time? Uh, nothing to report. Thank you. Russ, do you have anything you want to report? Um, <clears throat> nothing to report, but I'm curious about uh, what's going on with the building. Can we have that as an agenda item? Uh, the building no. next door you're asking about? Yeah, the, the, uh, Michael could answer. Uh, just. Uh, the foundation's in, they're putting the conduit. They've been, I think this week, the main effort has been, uh, not conduit, um, culvert and the drainage in um, around, the, uh, around the perimeter of the building. And, um, but no, they haven't started actually piecing the building together yet. Okay. All right, uh, Bertha, do you have anything to report today? Well, no, I was just, I just picked up this one article of, about what's happening to California. This is prior to our getting any rain as far as the drought is concerned and the uh, difference in the <clears throat> crops that are, are being grown here in California. And, and the biggest one to take a hit has been rice. Yeah, because they do require so much water, and so we just don't have it. What is our water forecast? So it's a La Nina year, which means it could be dry or wet, and so it's kind of anybody's they don't know. guess. Uh, but I can tell you that the rain that we've already received this year, we've already received as much rain in the lower Moak region as we did all last year, and this we're only two months into this water year. Um, so we're off to a very good start, but that has even been in the past. It's not necessarily a predictor of the rest of the water year. So um, I wish I could give you a better answer than that. Well, all I know is that it's really, really cold up the hill. It yeah. is freezing. Yeah. You know, I don't know if anybody's heard of Joe Bastardi. Bastardi, is that how you say it? He's online and he does a couple of um uh, he has some platforms on there, but he's a weather person. It's really interesting listing how he predicts the weather. That's helpful. I recommend the California Weather West, I think it's called, the blog from the meteorologist at UCLA. He's really, <coughs> really cool. Very cool. All right. Um, I have nothing to report um, at this meeting. Moving on, uh, item number six, next board meetings, Wednesday, December 8th at one o'clock and Wednesday, December 22nd at one o'clock as of this time. And if there's any changes to those, you will let us know. So item number seven, closed session, conference with real property negotiators, government code section 54956.8. The property is uh, APN 0120110111. 
Agency negotiators are Michael Minkler and Damon Wyckoff. Negotiating parties are Calaveras Healthy Impact Product Solutions, CHIPS. So any public comment? Do we do that before? Any public comment? Seeing none, let's uh, adjourn to closed session. And it is um, what time? 151. 151. All right.